Teresa, tonight this is encouraging news for Republicans and it creates questions for Democrats. Earlier this month, WFAA and the Texas Hispanic Policy Foundation conducted this poll of likely voters across the state. Tonight, we have the chairman of that foundation, Jason Viabo, with us to go through the numbers. Jason, let's start with the race for governor here. It shows that Greg Abbott cleared the 50% mark. He is ahead by seven points of Beto O'Rourke. O'Rourke hasn't been able to close that gap. Six weeks remain. What might change these numbers? You know, Governor Abbott's been remarkably resilient in these last few weeks. He's continued to hold this seven-point lead because of his strength among rural voters and Anglo voters. If Beto is able to overcome this margin, it's only going to be on the backs and with the help of women voters and newly registered voters. We see a significant number of new registered voters in Texas, and if they are young and if they are women, Beto will do better, just as we've seen in other states around the country. And there are a million new voters in Texas since the 2020 election. We still don't know, as you said, which way they might go. Both, both sides are claiming, but it looks like right now from other states that Beto will likely have a better feel for those voters than Greg Abbott will. Let's take a look at the, uh, the second job in the state, top job in the state, the race for lieutenant governor. Dan Patrick ahead of Mike Collier, the Democrat. This is a rematch from four years ago. Patrick's still in the lead with six points. This race, though, you think remains competitive? It's, it's less competitive than the other race, the AG, down the road. But Mike Collier has done an excellent job of cultivating moderate Republicans and independents. Because he's been able to do that, he's cut into the margin, and I think he's within striking distance. I still think it's a bridge too far, and I think Patrick wins this race, but Mike Collier has done an excellent job of getting new voters, and I think that some of this 8% may be Republicans thinking maybe they can vote for him, but I still think Patrick wins this race. And then let's look at the last job, the Attorney General race, which is the, the last big one here in the state. The race for Attorney General Ken Paxton still remains uh, ahead by five points of Rochelle Garza here. This one is one that everyone is keeping their eye on. I think if you're watching on election night, this is the one race that might have a chance to flip to the blue side. And that's because, one, Rochelle Garza is a strong candidate. But two, Ken Paxton brings great baggage to this race. He's had a significant number of legal problems and other problems. I think that's weakened his support among standard base Republicans. And I think Rochelle's within striking distance here, still 8%. Uh, and I think because of the small margin, she's got a chance, but it's gonna be tough. She's gotta work hard. If that un newly registered women vote comes out, she wins. And that's uh, six weeks remaining and two days until we find out what happens. Jason, thank you very much. Teresa, quick reminder also to our, uh, our, our viewers tonight. We have other results for the race for Texas Agriculture Commissioner, the race for the Railroad Commissioner, and the race for the Land Commissioner. All online for you right now, the 10 o'clock hour. They are at WFAA.com. And Teresa will have more poll results a little later this week. Interesting numbers. Jason, thank you. Three more things you need to know about polls. They are a snapshot of a specific moment in time, but they also show how headlines like overturning Roe v. Wade affect voters' attitudes. Now, campaigns use polls to decide where to spend money, like those ads you see on TV or social media. Donors can use them to decide whether to invest in a candidate, and that is, of course, how candidates raise money to make those ads. The polling process has changed since the 2016 election, and you can dig deeper into our polling process and the sample size on WFAA.com.